Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 3rd of June, 2011. 46 years ago this day, Gemini 4 was launched. I believe I have warned you in the past that the sun is a contrary beast. Just minutes after I had confidently predicted that the sun would produce lots of sea flares, it produced two small sea flares and then proceeded to die. As you can see here from the Inoa Go's X-ray plot, the background has dropped to the B4 level in a matter of hours. The answer to why this is happening lies in looking at the active regions. By the way, I often interchange the use of sunspot region with active region. Those of us used to looking at the solar corona call them active regions, and those of us who look at the photosphere call them sunspot regions. Neither of which is really important. It seems that all of the regions have started to decay with the possible exception of 1226. The question is, is this some sort of cosmic coincidence, or is the sun trying to tell us something about how it works? Anyway, 1225, 1229, 1228, and 1230, and the newly re numbered region 1232 all seem to be stable or weakening. Regions 1226 and 1227 seem to be the most active. Looking at the white light and magnetic movies from the Solar Dynamics Observatory, we can see this decay process occurring in the northern hemisphere, and the strange developments that are occurring in region 1226, 1227. In fact, if you compare the sunspots there with where the magnetic field is, you could quite easily argue there were three, perhaps even four, active regions in that one complex. So even saying something as simple as how many active regions there are on the sun at any given time is not quite such a simple matter. Here I've tried a little experiment. I've overlaid the sunspot images from HMI with the magnetic movie from HMI for regions 1226 and 1227. And you can see the relationship between where the sunspots are and where the magnetic field is. The first thing to note is how much bigger the spread of the magnetic field is than the sunspots. So there's a lot more magnetic field there than just the sunspots. Next, let's see what's going on in the transition region in Corona from the data from the Atmospheric Imaging Assembly on SDO. First, the transition region movie shows us that 1226 continues to give us eruptions, which should translate into coronal mass ejections. 48-hour X-ray movie shows us how the activity has quieted down, initially quite violent, and then returning to its normal subflare variability. We find when we look at the Soho coronagraph data that indeed there have been several coronal mass ejections, and one in particular towards the end looks as though it's what is called a halo event, which means it's heading towards us. NOAA in its daily forecast in fact warns us that this is the case. One of those coronal mass ejections had a velocity of over 800 kilometers per second, but even at that speed it'll take over a day for it to reach us here on the Earth. So we would expect to see that the geospace conditions remain relatively quiet, and indeed that's the case when you look at the ACE data. All the indicators, temperature density and velocity are dropping. However, NOAA does warn us that there is a coronal hole that is about to align itself with the Earth, and so we should expect a high-speed stream and fairly unsettled conditions. Of course, that on top of the uh, possibility of a geomagnetic storm from the coronal mass ejections will make the next few days fairly interesting. The rural zone, as monitored by the NOAA 15 satellite, looks to be very quiet indeed, and the KP index seems to be decaying too, at least for the time being. So in summary then, the sunspot number is at 118, the X-ray background has dropped to B3, radio sun flux is at 114 solar flux units, the solar wind speed has dropped to nearly 400 kilometers per second, with a density of less than one proton per cubic centimeter, and the KP index is still rated as quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours are that C flares are still possible. M and X flares, though, are very unlikely. The sunspot number will remain high. We'll likely still get coronal mass ejections, and a geomagnetic storm is possible. From the composite coronal image, we can see that there's nothing due back for three or four days, and even then, those are not particularly impressive regions, at least at the moment. For those of you living in the UK, don't forget I'm giving a public lecture on the 17th of June uh, at the Clamfield Memorial Hall. It is entitled, Why is the Solar System Warming? The link to the Hampshire Astronomical Group uh, website is in the description box below. If you'd like more details about what's going on on the sun today, then follow some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see some earlier editions of uh, the sun today, then go to my channel, they're all listed there, along with some of my global warming videos. It might be fun to go back one rotation or two rotations and see what we were talking about last time the Sun was in this particular configuration. To do that you can go to the uh, Sun Today video on May 6th and, the, uh, and the, for the previous rotation on April 9th. The links are listed in the description box below. And the Today's Global Warming featured video 
discusses the difference between the terms global warming and climate change. Hope you enjoy them. Well, that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.